Siegel. Uh, first of all, I want to acknowledge that we're on Iroquois territory. Uh, a lot of people uh, are doing research. Uh, and um, so the, this is indeed Iroquois territory. Uh, the Cayugas hold the wampum for the Mississaugas. Uh, but so I just want to acknowledge that. Uh, one of the things I want to talk about is that I do a First Nations show uh, every Thursday night on Occupy Toronto's live stream. And for the last month and a half, my wife and I have been interviewing uh, many people from uh, New Brunswick. Uh, Ron Tremblay, we uh, uh, interviewed uh, Rain, Claire, uh, Suzanne Patlas, Pocahontas. Uh, yesterday we had uh, two lawyers, uh, one human rights lawyer, Brian Seaman, and we talked with uh, Peter Daphne from Moncton, uh, who is not a lawyer actually, but he's very, very interested. And so we've been covering a lot of this. Um, there's the captain right there. Uh, so one of the things is that they've been talking about uh, is that uh, the, the amount of force that was used yesterday in, in the uh, taking down and uh, the disrupting of, of our ceremonies and, and taking our, arresting our government officials. And uh, this is something that I, I, I don't agree with. My heart is really for the people in New Brunswick. I'm really glad to see that they're standing up for, for Mother Earth because it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's that time now that, we're, that we have to come and stand for Mother Earth. It's time for us to confront these corporations that continue to steal our land and our resources without our consultation. So through, through the times that I've been talking with many of these people, they're glad to see that we here in Toronto are actually doing something in support of uh, the Big Ma uh, Warriors and the Big Ma Confederacy. So uh, they, they asked me to just say that they're really happy to see that we're doing here, we're uniting and we're strong and they, they say to continue praying for them and if, if, if we can lay tobacco down for them too. So, Yahweh. To my right stands a very strong Ogichi Dakwe. She's a beautiful woman uh, who I look to for inspiration in many ways. This is uh, song, song, the song Dick Way. Round of applause, come on, come on. Oh, hey. In my teachings, I'm told to speak from the heart, um, but uh, because I know some of these warriors, can you read? Ah, okay, okay. Kiss the mic. In my teachings, I'm told to speak from the heart. Can you hear me now? Uh, but because I know uh, some of the warriors personally, and I've been talking to them for the past uh, year, uh, sorry, a month and a half, uh, what I found out, what happened a couple days ago, um, I was devastated. Uh, and, and I purposely didn't... Um, I purposely didn't go to uh, YouTube to watch the videos until yesterday because I was just going to cry. So I couldn't speak from the heart today. I had to write something out. Um, so you'll have to bear with me. Ani Buju, Sangdekoy Indishnikaz. My name is Strong Hearted Woman. I am from the Ojibwe Nation and I am Bear Clan. I'm a defender of the land, not by choice, but by obligation. While certain reporters and bloggers would have others believe that we are nothing more than anarchists or my personal fave, eco-terrorists, <laughs> it is actually further from the uh, it is actually furthest from the truth. When I stand for the land and for all people, and I do mean all people. I have to always rely on the teachings and traditions I have been given. <coughs> this land we are standing on was the meeting place of the Iroquois Nation as well as the Huron and the Ojibwe Nations. The Ojibwe Nations have a wampum with the Iroquois Confederacy. A square on either side, each representing the nations, and this is called the path of peace that will always be open, will always be an open path between them. It is through this wampum that I have accepted the great law of peace as my own, and through this constitution it is inherent it is our inherent right to defend the land 
as it is written under wampum number 42. The crimes distributed through their respective nations shall be the sole owners and holders of the soil of the country, and in them it is vested as a birthright. That's from the great law of peace. It is our birthright as owners and holders of the land to remove any person or corporation from our territories, as it is further written in Wampum 74, with any alien nation or individual is admitted into the five nations, the admission, the admission shall be under, shall be understood only to be a temporary one. Should the person or nation create loss, do wrong, or cause suffering of any kind to endanger the peace of the Confederacy, the Confederate Lord shall order one of their war chiefs to reprimand him or them if a similar offense is again committed. The offending party or parties shall be expelled from the territories of the five nations. This includes all nations that are part of the everlasting tree of peace, which my friend Crystal is holding here. We are all covered under that tree, so long as we accept the great law of peace, the oldest constitution on this planet. Our laws supersede the laws that have been forced upon us. Laws that don't respect our customs, our traditions, or our land rights. But always reside on the side of corporate greed, as well as a tyrannical and oppressive government. It is evident that companies such as Swin, Enbridge, Barracks, and the like are the real eco-terrorists. <laughs> In which the RCMPs are their paid bullies. As we all saw yesterday or the day before in New Brunswick, Swin's website states to owners of the land and surrounding community that in order to go on private property, they need the permission from the landowner. For this permission, a permit agent will be met with each landowner to explain the planned activities, answer questions, and request a signed approval. Yesterday, they proved they didn't need signed approval. They forced it on the Mi'kmaq Nation as well as the Warrior Society by having their federal goons, the RCMP, enforce them off their own lands, uh, spraying them not only with bullet, rubber bullets, but real bullets, as well as pepper spraying them, and using brutal force not only on warriors, but on women, elders, and children, disregarding our traditions, our drums, the pipe carriers, and arresting an elected chief, the very person that supersedes their jurisdiction. I say shame. Shame! shame. They also state they have a strong history of being a responsible and respectful neighbor. That includes taking the responsibility for any unlikely, uh, any unlikely damage that may result from our activities. The damages they have incurred on the land and the people are insurmountable. How will they pay retribution when our land and, and waters are being destroyed and the basic human rights of our people and our allies are totally disregarded so blatantly? They are just people, mothers, fathers, grandfathers, grandmothers, with inherent understanding to do what is truly right in their hearts. I think it is abundantly clear who the real eco-terrorists are. Thank you so much, Kathy. I just wanted to say one quick thing. If anyone here didn't know, as soon as fracking poles or drills, whatever you want to call them, enter the ground, they install, co they, um, they dump concrete around to protect the shale gas from leaking into the atmosphere, into the ecosystem. Upon installation, 20% of that concrete breaks. 20%, no matter what. So there's no fracking way you can tell me it's safe for my water. Thanks. <laughs> Drummers, up here, we want to get, uh, we want to get the... <laughs> we want to get the drummers and singers together and again reminding everybody what happened yesterday uh, you know a lot of the grassroots people who are here um, there are a lot of familiar faces a lot of people who you know for the last few years have been standing on the front lines have been standing up against corporate uh, resource extraction but what happened yesterday we saw um, a militarized protection of a foreign corporate interest attacking the community that it's supposed to protect. 
That is something that is a mark on the Canadian government. Prime Minister Stephen Harper recently uh, made a, 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 a statement that he's boycotting Sri Lanka for human rights violations. <laughs> um, which is which is laughable. It's funny, but it's also it's also disgraceful. The the level of hypocrisy uh, when you see what happened yesterday, when you see what happens uh, across Canada, when you see the Truth and Reconciliation um, having information withheld, when you see um, grassroots people being arrested for protecting their land that they have inherent jurisdictional title to. When you see treaties being ignored, when you see Section 35 of the Canadian Constitution being defied, these are the sorts of things that we want to draw attention to today. There are a lot of Canadians who just don't understand these issues. They struggle to understand, but they don't understand because of the lack of education, the erasure of Indigenous people from history, the erasure of Indigenous science from the textbooks the erasure of Indigenous education and language, the erasure of the very, uh, the very fact that Canada has had residential schools, the last one closing in 1996, and Canadian children don't learn about that. Canadian children don't have an understanding and Canadian citizens don't have an understanding of these issues because they have been educated in a colonial indoctrination. And that continues through media. It conti we see the media struggling to tell our stories. And media, media, I'm speaking to you. When you're trying to tell this story today, why don't you raise the point that the RCMP was protecting foreign corporate interests while attacking unarmed citizens? Yeah. 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 Treason. 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 So we'd like to invite the drummers and the singers to come up, please. We need to get uh, we need to get some good vibes going here and represent the way Indigenous people do. <laughs> help you but you're not allowed on the property this is our land we want you to know that we're exercising our sovereignty thank you go ahead thank you let's do it excuse me don't hit the camera please this officer here attacked my gear please again don't attack my gear we have a media liaison person here.
you know that we're taking a stand for you and your future too. This is not just a First Nations issue. It's an issue for all of us. It's a future we're going to face in this country if we don't take a stand against fracking and poisoning of this land and planet. So we want you to know that. That's why we're here. We're not here to fight you. We want you to know we're here taking a stand for the future of our children and your children. We want you to know that. Which kind of ask more then? I just want to say, number one, I want to hear a big high high for Elsie Book Took, our Mi'kmaq brothers and sisters who have stood up courageously to take a stand for Mother Earth, their children, and their future. So, can I get a high high? Yeah. It takes courage to stand up and be the voice, it takes courage to stand up and be proactive to take a stand for Mother Earth. The Africans are brothers and sisters. They have their own continent. The Irish, they have the island of Ireland to call their own. The Scottish have Scotland to call their own. The Asians have Asia to call their own. And what do they all have in common with First Nations? That they've been imposed upon harmfully and they've been oppressed with cultural genocide, with acts of cultural genocide. But they have a continent, sacred land and territory still call their own. We do not have that territory, that land, that continent, or that country to call our own. But that doesn't mean that we won't stand up, speak up, and be the voice for what the territory that we call our home, which is Turtle Island. I want to hear another high, high, everybody. High, high. I'm going to say something I've been saying. I've been keeping the spirit of I don't know more active all across Turtle Island, wherever I go. I'm going to share some spoken word with everybody. Let's all raise our hand for Therese Suspense. She's taking a stance for our defense. She weakened her body as a sacrifice so the nations will unite, stand up, and fight. Now we don't need violence to show we're strong. Though we've been cheated at this game for way too long. We won't sink to the level to settle the score. We'll stand strong, walk tall, and be idle no more. Now idle no more ain't just for First Nation. It's a Canadian's right to open consultation. For the rape Mother Earth, for the box to thrive. It's about democracy, our children's right to survive. So we'll let the drums sound, we'll let our voice be heard. We're a small population, but you can be sure. There's so much power in our spirits combined as we all come together, one heart, one mind. <laughs> because C-45 was proposed to affect First Nations land, but it has a major effect on the nation as a whole and future generations the land we call home yes it's a desecration built on capitalism and fueled by greed say environmental assessments are what we don't need they let the brass of oil and gas lead the way pollute the hearts of our children and our waterways so we'll let the drums sound let our voice be heard we're a small population but you can be sure there's so much power in our spirits combined as we all come together one heart one mind hey! <laughs> I just want to say I'm glad to see everybody come out. It's a small crowd, but there's a lot of heart, there's a lot of mind, and there's a lot of spirit. So one last time for Elsie Book Took, I make my brothers and sisters. Can I get a high, high? High, high. High, high. Can I go about then? Thank you, Earl, for sharing spoken word. Um, we're going to have a speaker come up in just one minute. I think it's time for us to have our voices be heard inside of where they're holding their meeting. So repeat after me, I don't know more. Let's let them hear that. I don't, I don't know, know more. more. I don't know more. I don't know more. I don't know more. Um, 
I'm speaking on behalf of our people, on behalf of our Mapuche people in southern Chile, who have also dealt with issues of genocide and ongoing colonial encroachment into our territories. 70% of the waters in, in southern Chile are privatized. 80% of the land is also privatized. Our people have decided to take a stand and fight back for the land. And because of this, they've been criminalized ongoingly for the past, well, for the past 500 years, but especially in the last 10 years. But we, we, we can see here that this, is an, this, this colonial genocide is not only exclusive to the southern part of this continent, it is all over this continent. This entire continent is stolen native land, and we must recognize this in order to be able to build our movements of solidarity, whether they, whether they be anti-poverty or any other, or any kind of other movements that we can build within our cities as well. This is all stolen native land. And we also have to remember that the struggle began m many, many years ago. Many of us were never idle. In fact, I would argue that all of us were, been, were, have been struggling for the many, for the past, many years struggling against this ongoing encroachment of these corporations, of these states on our territory. So we should remember that. Remember our brothers in struggle and all our love and relations to the Mi'kmaq people and warriors that are standing for the rights of the land out in so-called New Brunswick. And Marichiweo, which means 10 times we shall rise up. Thank you.
Yeah. So we've heard a lot of people talk about our rights and how we are so we are sovereign and we are exercising our rights. They're telling us we can't go in. Shame! 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 So, um, what I think we are going to do, we're going to have a few more chats and we're going to continue on this uh, discussion we're having about our rights and about the water. And uh, there was one other person who wanted to s come up and speak. Who was that? Was there someone else? <laughs> okay. Good morning. Sego. Good morning. I haven't heard anybody's language yet. I don't hear any. Good morning. I'm not going to tell you my name because we have unwanted guests. <laughs> Last night there were some friends, we came down and we were told there was going to be a fire and there was going to be prayer said for our brothers and sisters in New Brunswick. The reason that we're here, I'm American Indian Movement. I was part of the Ganyonge occupying force that went in. Ganyonge is now the only place in North America where land was taken back by Indian people. It's now recognized as liberated Mohawk territory in New York. We moved in, we took that back in 1974. I'm also with American Indian Movement. We've never left, we've always been here. And one thing I want to say about that, the reason that we're here is because there are police shooting at our brothers and sisters. Coward! There are police shooting at our brothers Coward. and sisters. American Indian Movement was started to combat and to deal with police violence against our people and to stop them from killing our people in their jail cells, to stop them from killing our people on the streets, to stop them from kidnapping them, to stop them from taking our children. And that's why we're here. We're here to say that this stops. We started back in the early 60s when I was a young man. We started standing up when they told us we couldn't hold our ceremonies, we'd be arrested. People used to hide to hold their sweat lodges. A lot of young people don't remember that. We fought for that. We stood up. And we said, we're not gonna let you beat them. We're not gonna let them beat us anymore. It stops. No more police violence against native people. No more police violence! This undeclared no war stops. Miigwech, Nyalgoa, Hapkola. Time for, time for some more I don't know more. 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 I don't know more.
it's, it's a, geno a legislative genocide. But it doesn't just affect Indigenous people, it affects all of Canada. Stephen Harper has been making FIPA agreements. A lot of people have been hearing and talking about the Canada-China FIPA, but what a lot of people don't know is there are about 12 or 13 other FIPA bills that he has with countries. And that is what, that is directly related to what happened yesterday. Because what happens is these corporations, through these FIPA agreements, can come in, they can develop wherever they want, and if somebody says no, like Indigenous people, because it's on their jurisdictional land, then that corporation sues Canada in a secret tribunal with three people for lost profits. Currently, Canada has about four billion of your tax dollars in arbitration because of these FIPA bills. Canadians need to wake up and take notice as Indigenous people lead the way to protect your water and this land from Stephen Harper, who is treating this country like his own personal corporation. This is a country, not a corporation. And as Mari uh, illustrated in her spoken word piece earlier, there is a maniacal greed happening where it's, it's, a, it's a grab for every resource possible. And Canadians need to wake up and take notice because it, it won't be too long before your children will be, all they will have is toxic water unless they have the money to pay for clean water. So Canadians need to take notice. Media, as you're telling these stories, do your research. Ask these questions. Why is Stephen Harper allowing the RCMP to attack unarmed citizens to protect foreign corporate interest? It is directly related to FIPA. And that is what we are here today to raise awareness about and to stand in solidarity with Elsa Buktuk and all the other First Nations communities who are leading the way. The Hupacheset First Nation is challenging the Canada-China FIPA, asking for a judicial review in the, in the federal courts. Again, it is Indigenous people who lead the way. A lot of Canadians, when you see this type of thing on the news, you go straight to your racist and ignorant points of view, talking about free handouts. What you don't realize is that Indigenous people are fighting these fights for you as well. So it is time for the media to tell these stories from a whole perspective and to ask these questions, not only of their citizens, but of their government. Why is their government allowing police and militarized protection of resource extraction? We are living in a petro state. That is the reality, Canada. That is the reality. And it is it and you have the opportunity to exercise your democratic voice. If this is a democracy, then Exercise your democratic voice. Exercise your democratic rights. Say no. Go in numbers to your MP's office and let them know that you say no. You say no to militarized protection of corporate resource interests, especially foreign corporate resource interests. And you say no to militarized attacks on unarmed citizens who are simply protecting the water. Let people know. Okay, so um, I just spoke to the cops as much as I don't like to do that. And um, uh, we can actually go into the hearings. So we have people in the hearings already. They don't want flags in the hearings because they consider them weapons. But um, um, if you want to take the flag off of the, uh, off of the, um, the stick that it's on, <laughs> It, maybe it won't be as deadly uh, to them as a we as a Excuse weapon. Me? Yeah. <laughs> cops again. Well, but basically they just said that we can go in, so if people want to quietly. They go have in room and... for about ten people left in there. They have ten seats left. Well, they have ten seats left, so. Um, <laughs> we can all squeeze. Yeah. Okay, so let's, so let's head in, guys. Yeah, let's go in. Right over here, the entrance is 
Let's go in, media, Stay back here. media, don't touch the camera. Don't, Stay back don't here. hit me. Don't touch me. Stay back here. Don't I am media. No, we were just told that people are allowed in, but now they're saying that people are not allowed in. We know we can't bring our flags because they're considered weapons, but we do. I am media. There is media there. I am media. There is media there. I am media. I am media. Hey, media, where's your media don't relations officer? How come they're don't allowed in the and I'm not? Don't touch the How come this don't media is allowed and I'm not? That media is there. Where's your media relations don't officer? Don't touch hey, hey, hey! You're pushing me into other people. Hey, hey! hey. Okay, take a step back. One of the great kids. Hey, hey, hey. One of the great kids. Don't shoot. There you go. Don't shoot. Don't, don't shoot. shoot. Don't pull your gun now. Don't shoot. Don't pull your gun. Yeah, what are you pushing He had his hand, hand on his gun. This guy yeah. had his hand on his gun ready to draw. You're like, we're the fucking rich. Shame. Look at this guy. Shame. We're the fucking rich, eh? Where'd you fucking in. bend over Let for the rich? Let us in. Let us in. I am media. There, Why is that media there? Why Where's your media relations touch? officer? Was that, does that remind you of the same you have to shoot when get all violent? Excuse me, why is that media allowed in and I'm not there? You wanted to pull your gun just like the protesters in, in New Brunswick? Where you guys shot what? What was that, rubber bullets you shot at? This guy had his hand on his gun. I know, I know, he had his hand on his gun. Unbelievable, ready to draw. Oh, hey! Who they should be in that five? Come on, don't get I am media. I am media. Hey, Serge, why is this media allowed in and I'm not? We should. We'll, we, we're we gonna have. And I'm media. Um, we're gonna have media. And I'm media. With them. Okay. Media goes in and I. Sir, are you going in? Yes. Come with me. I am media. Come with me. Yes. Oh 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 oh. oh. Thank you, sir. Good morning. Nina Wilson, please come to the front. Let this gentleman in. of indigenous women and girls in many communities, as well as increased alcohol and drug abuse, sexually transmitted infections, divisions among our families and communities, and a range of other social and health problems, which can also be understood as placing stress or strain on the social systems of our communities. You want to take a break? Okay. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure 
Excuse me, if you want to film me, I'll take that to the media area. Thank you. Take a break just as we show up, eh? Corruption at its best, folks. Look at the face of corruption. Face of corruption. I'm media. I, I, I'm, li I'm live streaming. It's that way, sir. It's that way. Hmm? Everyone else is doing it. With S. Yeah, yeah. They just they recessed. Them. They copped them. What? Who it is. Are you back out here again? Yeah. OJ yeah. Thunderclaw! I didn't recognize you at a costume. You look great, bro. Yar. Yar. <laughs> Not great. the biggest fan. He knows, man. He knows. <laughs> you don't have to embarrass me, Captain. <laughs> I left my smokes inside. Is that a hint? <laughs> yeah, can, can I grab a couple from you? Sniper! How are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> that that uh, that we do use our our protesting ability before the cops get tasers and hopefully prevent them from getting tasers and continuing to have guns. Yeah. Just so people know, I was just inside and the whole thing about like having ten seats is complete bullshit. There's like thirty-five to forty-five seats available in there that I could count. The cops uh, lied. Forty-five seats. The cops yeah, the lied. Seats. Oh my god. Uh, they also said that it's an urgent matter and they're going to take a break. I guess this is an urgency. So it looks like we could actually get most of our people here inside with 40 seats. Put your hand up if you'd want to go inside and witness what's going on. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, put your hand up if you've got an earnest interest in going in and seeing what's going on. Um, put your hand up if you don't really understand why you're told that you're not allowed to go in. I was in twice already today. Okay. I'm just trying to keep the crowd warm here if anyone wants to say anything, you know? Is this a private or public building? Um, the Metro Toronto Convention Center is, I think it's a public building, but when it's rented out to, to people, it's, it's private or it's a... It's a, you know, it's a private owned okay. entity owned by the city. Right. In the past with like, um, with when we were protesting like barracks, AGM and stuff like that, we were actually told that the sidewalk out front is private property um, because possibly a lease to the, to the center okay. of the city. Okay, so uh, they, they've just taken a 10 minute break. Excuse me. Uh, yeah. And what they have asked me to let everybody know is that once they come back, they're gonna do a seat count and then slowly bring people in. They're really asking people not to stand on the grate. They're afraid that it's gonna break. <laughs> so, um, then let asking, us in. We're asking for, we're asking for, um, 
we're asking for. Yeah, we're we're definitely going to bring people in. It's just a matter of um, once they once they finish their 10 minute break, and then they're going to do a seat count, and then we're going to bring people in. So it's going to be people are going to be coming in slowly. Now, people with the flags, if you have some, if you want to come in, and you have somebody who can hold your your flag pole, you can bring your flag in, but just don't. Don't bring it on the pole. Okay, so we've we've also uh, <laughs> negotiated that someone from the NEB would actually come out here and address the the people here as well and answer and questions as to, to their policy. Down. Yeah, and okay. and then we're also going to yeah. go in as well. R right on. So, it's so gonna be a there's going to be some accountability at least for the for the people out here who deserve an answer mm. and and deserve a voice because everybody here deserves a voice. Um, and and that's why we're here. We're here to be heard. We're here to let uh, not only the media know and not only Canada know, but uh, let the, the the hearing know that you know we're all here. We we all have a voice, and we all deserve to be heard. Uh, this line nine pipeline affects everybody. Again, this is the same issue that we're seeing uh, with the fracking issue. And that's why we're all here, because we're all here concerned about our water and concerned about the protection of the land. And uh, and we all deserve to be heard. So um, they're taking this break, and then uh, once they've got everybody seated, they said that we can start to bring people in slowly. Yeah. So, and then I, I'm not too sure about the, the spokesperson if they're coming out during the break or not. Okay, well, if there's anyone left out here that can't get in, yeah. the spokesperson's gonna need to stay out. Oh, yeah. Um, Another thing is that, yeah, there, because if, if some people aren't allowed in, they're going to need to to answer the question, well, can, is there not standing room? Exactly. You know? Yep. Not room. What, what, not what stage are they at right now? I don't, I don't know. I literally went in and they were they broke. They took a break. One of the things you got to know is that Enbridge is actually, with, and the NEB has been trying to uh, railroad through the agenda of these hearings to avoid the protest that is going to happen tomorrow because they know that there's uh, you know, possibly a thousand people or more who are going to be coming down to oppose this. Um, anyone with basic research skills or uh, an interest in clean water and the environment will know that this is a bad idea. The one that beat up the bean. Everyone's, when I say hello, the one that Officer beat up the bean, right Officer there, Haroon. right in the center of your screen. Hello, Officer Haroon. Hello, Officer Haroon. We know what you did. We know what you did. You beat up a bean. We know what you did. You beat up our friend. You beat up our friend. Because because he because he took part took part in protesting in protesting 14 division 14 division because they murdered. Sammy Yatim. Sammy Yatim. Coward. Coward. We know. We know. You threat a baby. Fucking coward. That you threatened a baby. And told our friend. And told our friend. That if he ever. That if he ever. Protests. Protests. At your home. Meaning, meaning 14 division, 14 division that his family, that his family would, not be safe. would not be safe. Whoa! Oh, Shay! Shay! These are the kind of people should not be on the force. Yep. You shame everybody on the okay. force. Um, you are a coward. You are a coward. You are a fucking coward. What's the matter, rules, man? Um, so we've got a representative uh, here. The one in the middle of your screen. Tell us about this guy. Why are you join the police if you're going to be a bully? Why do you join the fucking police? Where's my ID? Do you have your ID back? 
it. But I, I wanted to hear what I had to say. Guys, listen up. Okay, so um. This is a member of the NET, Lee Williams, who is going to explain to you about the process with the seating. It's just you have to talk right into it. Uh, Lee Williams from the National Energy Board. We only have so many seats in the hearing room. So for fire safety, life safety, we have to make sure that we don't exceed room capacity. So we are willing to make sure that everybody has a seat that we can in the room, and then that'll be it. So once we reach capacity, I'm sorry, I can't do any more than that. What about the so, okay, so overflow guys, room? An overflow if, if, room. If, is it, is everyone okay here if I ask some questions on our behalf? of uh, Lee Williams from the National Energy Board? Yes. yes. yes? Okay. So, um, what is the capacity of the room? Well, it's, it's 150. Seats 150. Okay. So, what we're going to do is we'll, we'll, in, we'll see what we have now for space yeah. available, and then we'll bring in two at a time to make sure we have the people in the seats, and then okay. once we reach capacity, then we'll start with the hearing. So, again. how many empty seats are there know. right now? I don't know. So, what we do is we have people inside, yeah. so we'll ask them to seat and we'll know how many seats we have. Okay, um, w when can we expect your seat soon, count? As soon as I can go back in. Okay, um, also, is there a possibility, the, the crowd here has expressed an interest in a uh, possibility in asking you what is preventing you from bringing extra chairs into the room? It's just the way the setup of the room is, and that's what had been set up by the venue with so many seats, based so, on the room configuration. So, um, with the emphasis and the value of public participation, would you be willing to entertain the possibility of fitting in a few more chairs so that everyone here who would like to participate can? There's lots of room for that. I, I was in there. We'll we okay, furthermore, furthermore, will you entertain the possibility of allowing standing room so that the people who uh, are excluded because you haven't planned properly for enough chairs can actually stand at the back of the room. Well, let me see how many seats we have available first. Okay. Okay. But well, is, I'm going is, to do that right now. Is that reasonable that they can stand at the back of the room? Well, hey, Frank, be careful. We're going to fall down. It's not be your careful, decision. Frank. How, how many feet? Okay. How many, want to see how I many just many want to ask you another out. question. Oh, wait, how many feet are between the last row of chairs and the back wall? Yeah, quite a few. Three and a half. Quite a few. Three, three and a half? More yeah. than that. She's just going to talk to you for a minute. I was just in there. I'm going to go in and do a, I'm going to go in and do a head count as well. Okay. And I'm going to come back Can and report to you. Can you just hold on one second? Okay. Yeah, yeah. no, we're good. Yeah. yeah. It's been suggested that if, they're, if they come back and they don't allow everyone in, that we do make the request that they actually hold off until tomorrow, yeah. at which point they can uh, accommodate us in one of their larger rooms. And then that way the people who come here tomorrow who have been coming down and plan to come down to this for, in, on buses and things like that, can also get an opportunity to witness what's going on in these hearings. Okay, so back on to our other register, the other track of what we're saying. Devine is here right now, and so is Officer Haroon, and this is a good chance for Devine to stare down Officer Haroon, who beat him up, who stopped him on his bike, who stopped him on his bike for not having a bell, and ended up beating him up and targeted him because he is an Iroquois, because he is a protester. Or police violence against Indian Sigo. people. Sigo. So you know, about a month and a half ago, I was uh, riding my bike on Queen Street near Lansdowne, when Usman there, yeah, we're on a first name basis, Usman, over there, decided to threaten me as he threw me on the ground. Which one? Right over there, 9879, there he is. Right over there. Wait a minute, 
wait for everybody. He told me if I ever showed up at 14 Division, he was going to shoot me and my family. Shit! On our territory. And then he took, he stole my, my, my status card, which to this day, I still have not received. And then when the police liaison for the Aboriginal people went down, she was denied access to my status card that Osman stole. You should quit your job, motherfucker. Will you give him back his status card? He threatened a 10-month-old baby on Iroquois land and told me that I was never welcome to protest at 14 Division at any time. He said it was his house. He said it was his house. He didn't say it was 14 or the Chiefs. He said it was his house. Get down on the ground, man. And then he told me to get down on the ground, and he kept calling me a coward continuously. And he told me that I was his bitch. You're a bitch. Fucking bitch. I ain't your bitch, Usman. I ain't your bitch, and I'm going to do whatever I want on Iroquois land. Yeah. You're not an Iroquois citizen. You do not belong to the Iroquois Confederacy, Usman. You got, what do you got to say to that, Usman? Hey, don't run away. Don't run away, brother. Don't run away. Come back, bitch! You think you're a fucking man? Come back, bitch! What are you doing? Get down on the floor. Come back here. This is what police oversight looks like. Get down on the ground, bitch! Unfortunately, we have something called the Don't shoot! I'm just the messenger. Fuck the SAU! Don't shoot! I'm just the messenger. Which even the ombudsman cable the report called oversight undermined, is what you need to know. Hey, Officer Haroon, can we have you speak to us? Okay, um, Jemias is back, may have a report for us. Get down on the ground, bitch! That's what Officer Haroon said to my friend there, Devine. Yeah, that's what your friend said to my friend. Hi. Brother, they're letting a few more people in, but you're going to have to take your pull up. You want to come in? Yeah, okay. Okay, so let's, let's, let's do two more for now. All right. Two more. Okay. How many people are they letting in? Well, they're going to let us all in, but just okay. a few at a time. Yeah. Okay? We, we, we're, we're, they're just getting everybody seated. We're, we're in the middle of doing this. We're going to bring some people in. We're going to bring people in a few at a time. And we want to try and get as many of us in as possible. We're not taking polls in. We're not taking polls in. Leave the polls out for now. Is, is there someone who can volunteer to uh, just be with the polls or anything that doesn't make it in, like the banners? Is there one you person can put in my car. Stay? You can put in my car. I could do that if uh, the last one is putting it. But it's, you can't walk it. We're going to need one person to stay. We're going to need one person to stay out here. I can stay out if uh, anybody is here. If you guys want. I'm not okay, this guy's volunteering. Yeah. Yeah. It might be good to have him.
commit to like making sure that like I'm the last one in because in a situation like this you just don't want to leave people uh, outside um, also yeah. under any circumstance when you're leaving a protest make sure to do it with a buddy because you know there might be cops still around and they may want to rough you up when no one's looking <laughs> hey, I got room for three more three more come on down <laughs> Who do we have? All right, two more people. Johnny, tell them what they won. <laughs> From the other side of the grate. So who's got a picture of that cup? I do. I'll take a screenshot. Okay. J hyphen I, I know I mean. at live dot ca. Well, I, we're Facebook yeah. friends. Yeah, test out the safety of the grade. I'll do it there. They were cordoned off and yeah. under construction. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, this is a high traffic area. It's very touching that there's no concern about our safety. Strange thing is, I've been waiting six weeks since this car was ready. How are you, buddy? Uh, I'll wait a bit. Okay. Okay, so we're bringing in people three at a time. There are seats available. We want you to occupy a seat. So as soon as you go in, take a seat. Occupy! Occupy! <laughs> Another thing about Officer Haroon is he's actually on the sunshine list, which means he's earning about $113,000 per year to uh, target and beat up protesters. And so, babies, uh, and, and babies. babies. Or threatened babies. So. There's a Yeah, me too. There's a media area. I know, there is a media area. I was there already. I've been there the last two days. <laughs> but uh, what was funny is he used our megaphone that, that Stop Harbor's Crime on it. Wah, wah. What happened? Uh, the NEB guy used our megaphone to address the crowd, and the megaphone had Stop Harbor's Crimes on it. Oh! Which is what the police should be doing if they were really doing their jobs. Arrest them for treason.
This is uh, media. I'm trying to find a plug. Okay. Is there an extra plug back there?
have asked them would be, uh, would be again to ask security to please let uh, enough people in to fill all the empty chairs. Uh, and security is in the process of doing that and filling the seats now. Uh, Our jobs are not in. violence yesterday. 